I could possibly point to a wooden table to prove how plastics don't need to be used to make our furniture. We can use natural stuff or whatever. You can't just show me a wooden table. And this is a, a mistake in education today. They think that they can just uh, name a bunch of facts for kids and the kids can interpret them on their own, come up with their own ideas and their own theories. Or there are people who like to get together with for discussions or whatever and they don't like to argue, and they don't want to s change anybody's mind. They just want to exchange ideas. They just want to talk about their views. Uh, ideas and arguments are integral. Arguing is part of learning and thinking and correcting your behavior in the world. So just sharing everything and never telling people what your conclusion is doesn't go. Very few facts are able to tell their own story. I'll go further and say that there isn't a fact that can tell its own story. You have to comment on it to give the meaning you want to give in the context. Now we skip to the next page, We're page 26 now. Strange it is that men should admit the validity of the arguments for free discussion, but object to their being pushed to an extreme. This is obviously a very, very old case. Well, Sure, we need free discussions, but let's not be extreme about it. You don't need to be offensive. Quote, not seeing, these people who make this argument do not see, that unless the reasons are good for an extreme case, they are not good for any case. So you can't say freedom of expression is a good idea for these other cases. There's no defending those other cases unless it's the extreme case that you build your principle on. You have to start by saying, and and this is this is what um, Thomas Jefferson said, and uh, Mark Stein has repeated it: the freedom of to speak freely, freedom of speech itself, is equivalent to the right to offend people. It is equivalent to that. You cannot separate it. You cannot reduce it beyond that. The right to offend someone is identical to the right to speak your mind freely without any interruption. Uh, and that's what he's saying here. So, hardcore pornography should be legal. Anything except the incitement of violence should be legal. On to the next page. We skip a few paragraphs. In the present age, which has been described as destitute of faith, but terrified at skepticism, uh, the claims of an opinion to be protected from public attack are rested not so much on its truth as on its importance to society. So in the present age, people don't care so much about truth as whether society can use the concept. Seems like not a lot's changed. That's still the case today. It doesn't really matter if there's any wealth behind the money. It's useful for us to use this paper money. It's useful to society. And it allows the government to have control of the money supply, which they wouldn't have if it were not, you know, um, gold and hard currency banking. Uh, so it doesn't matter if it's in, uh, not economically feasible to have paper money. Still, it's useful for society. Or how about the statistics about black people? Uh, I don't mind the fact that Asians get so much better scores than white people on math and history and science exams. I don't mind. And they're better at spelling and probably you know, speed reading and stuff. I'm okay with that. Uh, and I'm, I'm okay with the fact that white people generally get better uh, scores on these things than blacks and Hispanics. But I don't think it's important because you have to judge every single individual on their merits. So we can talk about those statistics. We could even maybe talk about the reasons why they exist. Wouldn't that be crazy? But in society today, you're not allowed to talk about that kind of stuff. Just look at Bill Murray and what he did when he published The Bell Curve, how much hot water he got in and how much people hated him and what he was saying. Uh, he says we can admit that there are statistical differences between races and not run screaming from the room. Classical quote. I love that. Uh, and uh, only if we could. Only if we could. That would be great. <clears throat> so today, 
as in his time, Milton's time, or John Stuart Mill's time, uh, people don't care so much about the truth of a claim as its importance to society or the effect it will have on society. Skipping down to page 30, quote, Mankind cannot hard, can hardly be too often reminded that there was once a man named Socrates, between whom and the legal authorities and public opinion of his time there took place a memorable collision. Born in an age and country, abounding in individual greatness, this man has been handed down to us by those who best knew both him and the age as the most virtuous man in it. He was put to death by his countrymen after a judicial conviction for impiety and immorality. Of these charges, the, tri the tribunal found him guilty and condemned him to be put to death as a criminal. And so it happened. He had to take uh, hemlock. He was ignominiously put to death as what? As a blasphemer. Men did not merely mistake their benefactor. They mistook him for the exact contrary of what he was. So Socrates was the benefactor of mankind and was not, not just ignored, which would be one thing, but was persecuted for being the benefactor of mankind. Now a, a person can take note of that without necessarily being just um, all about self -prosec being prosecuted or something. You can take note of the fact that people, by and large, there's a lot of mob and groupthink, and that it's a lot easier to just stand down and let the mob run someone over than to stand up for that individual. And if everybody in the mob decides not to stand up against the mob, then the mob just carries on. Um, it's unfortunate but change comes difficultly, slowly, easier in the United States of America today than in any other society in all of history, but still, change comes slowly and difficultly. And anyone who tries to change things is usually uh, up against quite a few uh, bits of inertia. Quite a few bits of resistance, I was going to say, but you don't necessarily actively have people resisting you as people who just, you can't get them moving. Like when the automobile was being brought into society and everyone said, oh, it's just a passing fad and, you know, horses are so much more reliable or natural or whatever. They aren't really fighting you tooth and nail. If you get a cheap car, they'll probably buy one if you can manufacture it. But the thing is, they are inert. They are not moving. It takes effort to get them going whoever they are, hundreds or thousands or millions of people, it takes some efforts to get them on your side or on the side of change or progress. Something that's noted here by Mill and was unfortunately noted by Socrates in his last days. Now what about these men who put Socrates to death? Quote, These were, to all appearance, not bad men, not worse than men commonly are, but rather the contrary men who possessed in a full, or somewhat more than a full measure, the religious, moral, and patriotic feelings of their time and people, the very kind of men who in all times, included, including our own, have every chance of passing through life blameless and respectable. So the type of people that put Socrates to death are respectable, moral people. So he's not saying the people who fight uh, against uh, freedom of speech and so on are necessarily immoral. They're average and moral for their time. But uh, they still do something wrong when they mistake their benefactor for an attacker. In, in fact, uh, Socrates was their benefactor and they mistook him for an attacker. Now, would stuff like that happen, as it frequently does, if rationality were common among mankind, as he was suggesting earlier, it is.